Welcome back to our fourth episode of the IHSA podcast. Today, we'll be dis- discussing the updated Power 25 rankings, as well as some notable, notable performances, teams outside of the Power 25 that are looking in, and game recaps from last week. Assistant Director Peter Hammett will now take us through last week's Player of the Weeks. Thanks, Gavin. Uh, yeah, looking at the Pitcher of the Week, we got Hayden Adamowicz, um, someone that actually has had a couple good weeks now. Um, so... This past week, to win the award, he uh, threw a perfect game, struck out 11 um, in a 12 to nothing win, and he actually threw a no-hitter last week, too. So he's uh, put together a couple nice weeks. We got him ranked 11th in the state uh, for the 2027 class. He's got 17 innings uh, so far on the year with a perfect 3-0 and record, um, also with one save. Um, he's only allowed two hits on the year. Uh, with two walks, and he's got 35 strikeouts to go along with a 0.40 ERA. And then for the hitter of the week, we got Austin Rathgeb, an uh, uncommitted senior for Alton. Uh, He went 9 for 13 with two home runs, four doubles, eight RBIs, eight runs scored, five walks, and a stolen base. Um, Yeah, uncommitted senior. Now he's hitting 477 on the year in uh, 44 at-bats. Um, with four, sorry, five doubles, four home runs, 15 RBIs, uh, 18 runs scored, 11 walks on the year so far, and seven stolen bases. Um, and another little nugget on him, he's hit safely in 12 of the 15 games uh, so far, and he's got a current six-game hit streak. So good for both of them, and uh, hopefully they can keep it rolling the rest of the year. Yeah, for sure. And, and be on the lookout uh, every Tuesday for our Player of the Week release. Um, but now kind of, you know, looking at the Power 25, there's been a lot of shuffle in the, the rankings this week. Um, some teams playing really well, and, and they're hot. So Drew's going to kind of take us through that that top ten. Yeah, thanks, Gavin. Uh, getting into the middle of the season here, weather's starting to turn for us. Uh, teams are able to get some more games under their belts. And as you can uh, see from what Peter just took us through, there's been some really good uh, performances from around the state. So looking at the Power 25, um, top team in the state remains the same Nazareth they actually matched up with JCA on Saturday uh it was a number one versus number two teams in the state and Nazareth came away with the win seven to four so they are now 17 and oh uh they had a four and oh week they also beat Lane Tech and Drayan who and was the number one team in uh Indiana's 3A rankings and uh they also took down Whitney Young 11-1 11-1 to 1 for their 4-0 week. The number two team in the state, St. Lawrence. Uh, they jumped from number three. They are 15-1. and 1. They also had a 4-0 week. Um, they beat St. Ignatius 10-0, Montini Catholic 13-0, Marmion Academy 7-4, and Aurora Central Catholic 22-2. Uh, so they're, they're good every year. Uh, we are about to get into that Chicago Catholic Blue, you know, main conference schedule. So they are going to, they are going to get, Plenty of tough matchups, plenty of opportunities to prove their worth. Uh, at number three, just dropping one spot, is Joliet Catholic. Uh, they took their first loss of the year this week. They actually took their first two losses of the year this week, and they now sit at 12-2. and two. Uh, We're still really high on them. Uh, they lost to Naz, like I mentioned, 7-4. to four. They also lost to Maris, 6-4. to four. But um, they took down Maris 15 nothing, 7 nothing, and then OPRF, Oak Park River Forest, 10 to 5. At number four, uh, jumping up one spot is Edwardsville. Mentioned it last week that you know their record should start looking better as the season gets going here. Uh, they are now 9 and 5. They went 2 and 0 on the week. They took down Carmel out of Indiana, who is a top ranked 4A team. Um, in Indiana state rankings, and then they also knocked off Sac- Sacred Heart Griffin 15 to seven. So they are they're trending in the right direction. They come in at number four now, and right behind them is Huntley, the Red Raiders. Uh, they are 12 and one off to a strong start. They were our preseason number 10. They've worked their way all the way up to number five, five and a week. They were busy last week. They took down Lake Zurich five to three. Jacobs they took a two game set from them eight to five and 11 to one. Uh, they knocked off Crystal Lake Central five to one, and then McHenry eight to three. Uh, so the Red Raiders have it going right now. They look to be uh, the top of the class up there in the Fox Valley. Um, and then the team making the biggest jump here was a team that we were talking about in the preseason for a Power Twenty Five spot. We left them off the list. 
Um, our very first ranking, they came in at number 14. They stayed at 14 last week. And then this week, they they went off and, and did their thing and really, really proved that, that they look to be one of the top teams in the state. And that's Lincoln Way West. Uh, Lincoln Way West is 12-0. and They went 4-0 and this week, and they are up to number six. They're up eight spots. And uh, they took down three Power 25 teams on the week. Manuka, they knocked them off four to three. They beat Lincoln Way East seven to one. They beat Sandburg five to three. And last but not least, they also took down Marion Catholic fourteen to twelve. Um, so Lincoln Way West is, you know, proven to us that we made the wrong decision not putting them in the Power 25, and uh, they are undefeated yet to lose. And they've played plenty of teams. They went down to. Uh, a PBR tournament, a prep baseball tournament down there at Lake Point to start their year. And um, we're going to have to get out and see what they're all about. Uh, right behind them, dropping three spots to number seven is Providence Catholic. Um, kind of a harsh drop, to be honest, going three spots. I don't know if they warranted going that far because they had a four in one week. Uh, they did lose their one loss was to a power 25 in St. Charles North. They lost six to two, but these other teams, uh, just kind of warranted that, that drop to number seven, um, in other weeks, maybe they would have just dropped one spot, but Huntley going five and oh, Lincoln way West going four and oh, knocking off three power 25 teams. It's just kind of the way it fell. Uh, so Providence Catholic now at number seven, they are 10 and three coming off a four and one week. Um, another team that's hot coming up one spot is new trier uh the trevians went four and oh on the week they beat prospect seven nothing vernon hills seven to five main east 16 nothing and then they also knocked off oak park river forest uh eight to two um lake park right behind new trier at number nine up one spot also undefeated on the week went five and oh um they are 11 and one on the year and they are looking really, really strong there. The Lancers, uh, they knocked off Hersey 11 to six, Oak Park River Forest eight to six, and Batavia 11 to five, 17 nothing, and 13 to three there in a in a three game conference sweep. Um, you know those three game conference series too. That those when you see a team that that actually sweeps another team, that that says a lot to me. It's really, really hard to win three games. Um, so Lake Park moving in the right direction. And then rounding out our top 10 here, Gavin, is Downers Grove North. They're down two spots, a little similar to Providence Catholic, dropping two spots, coming off of four and one week. I know Providence dropped three spots, but moving down maybe more than they warrant. But, man, there's a lot of teams playing good baseball. And when you're at the top of the – Top of the class here, top of the state, your your margin for error is, is very small. So Downers Grove North, 12-2 and two on the year, dropped two spots, like I said. Um, they took a three-game set pr- from Proviso West. They also knocked off Hinsdale Central 10-2, to two, and their one loss was to Downers Grove South 2-1. to one. Um, A lot of good teams in the mix here, a lot of good records, and I know there's a lot of teams knocking on the door too, Gavin. Yeah, thanks, Drew. Um, so kind of moving through now to the risers. Um, you know, there are some teams in that top 10 that ha- have rose so far, but there's some teams down below that have made some big jumps. And the first one to mention here is Juliet West. So, Hammett, kind of take us through that team. Yeah, Juliet West, they're 14-3. and three. Um, They just had a 6-0 and week uh, with some big wins. They took down uh, number 24 at the time, Sandberg, and then number 7 at the time, uh, Manuka. So they're jumping up 10 spots um, to number 12. Yeah, I mean, it's a potent offense. We've seen them a handful of times now. Um, One of the best infields, if not the best infield all around in the state. I mean, they got, you know, uh, Jimmy Anderson, James Love, um, Kale Karczewski up the middle, Owen Young handling the staff behind the plate. Um, They just got some some senior leadership and some really quality players all around that, um, that field. And then... Moving down, then we got uh, St. Charles North. They're moving up to 16, so they're jumping up five spots. Um, they're 8-3-1. and one. They went 4-1 and one on the week, and they had some big wins as well. Um, they took down number 13, Libertyville, 7-3, uh, and they also took down number 4, Providence Catholic, 6-2. Uh, to two. So a couple good wins for them, and, yeah, so naturally they're going to rise up. Um, yeah, five spots, uh, so now they're at 16. Yeah, and then Tyler looking at, at Sycamore, you know, they're 10-0, 4-0 week. I know you've seen them. 
Yeah, I saw him a couple weeks ago against Hananega, who at the time was our number 25 in the Power 25, and they beat them. And they've just – the beats kept rolling for them. They've kept playing good ball. Uh, they're 10-0 and now. They had a 4-0 and week last week. It's a veteran team. Kyle Hartman is is probably the leader of that squad behind the dish, uh, 2024 going to Western Kentucky. Um, I was really impressed with their outfield uh, with Kyle Preble, Colin Severson, and William Klomp out there. Uh, and when I saw him, T. Callahan threw the ball really well, which is probably the ace of that staff. So they'll have a shot to win every time he's on the mound. And they also have uh, Tyler Townsend, who's a very talented 2026 arm that, that we really like. So – uh, it's just a, it's an older team. They play good defense. And when, when you're a veteran team and you play good defense, you're going to win a lot of games in high school. So uh, we'll continue to monitor them, but they're up to 19 now. Yeah. And Sycamore is a team that made it to state in 3A last year. And, and it looks like they might be on the path to potentially do that again. Um, but looking outside, or it's sorry to the teams that are new to the Power 25, um, York, they're a team that we've been kind of talking about these past few weeks that they might jump in, and it was a lot of, you know, trying to see if Ryan Sloan was going to pitch, but it doesn't matter. It looks like, you know, 12-2, and two, they're 5-1 and one this week. They're doing it. Um, so, Hammett, kind of take us through their team. Yeah, I think it's time we get them in this uh, in the rankings here. You know, they're 12-2. and two. Uh, They just went 5-1 and one on the week. I saw they were playing Hinsdale Central, and, um, you know, they were taking care of business over there. Um, yeah, Ryan Sloan, I mean, we've said it a million times. The more he pitches, the better they're going to be. And, I mean, he's obviously not throwing every single game for them, and they're still, you know, finding ways to win ball games. So, yeah, that is a team that um, we have liked the whole year, um, and they're finally getting their shot in the Power 25. And then uh, we are also got uh, Lembrick North. Uh, they're 10-2-1. and one. Um, We got them sliding in at number 23. Uh, that's a team that, we also liked in the preseason. They were on our radar for sure. Um, they got some pieces all around. Um, you know, Ethan Bass, the top sophomore in the state, um, just to name one. Um, yeah, they got some pieces we really like, and, you know, they've been off to a hot start. And uh, not surprised to see that and would not be surprised to see them keep rolling. Yeah, and then kind of looking outside of the Power 25, too, there's quite a few teams that we have um, that we're looking at and seeing how they're doing, and, and maybe they're a team that can jump into that Power 25 eventually. Um, and, and one of those teams right now is Dunlap. They're 13-2. and two. They had a 5-0 and week. Um, they've got some really good arms in Davis Weeks and Jackson Tresenrider. They're both uh, 2025s, and they're both uncommitted. Um, and then they have Owen Schisler, too, who's found some time on the mound for them. He's also an uncommitted 2025. Um, and then, you know, Jackson Newton, Jack Piper, he's going to Carroll University. Um, Davis Weeks, Jackson Tresenrider, these guys are all are players that can uh, play in the, you know, find their time in the lineup too. They're not just arms. So they've got a really talented team and, and they're going to be one to to watch for in that middle line I conference. And I'm, I'm sure they'll continue to find success uh, throughout the rest of the year. Um, and then another team in that area too is East Peoria. Uh, they're 15 and one. And they had a 4 0 week with a win over Sacred Heart Griffin. Uh, they're another talented team down here in c- central Illinois. And we've kind of talked about them uh, a little bit. Uh, and a couple, you know, other podcasts, but they're they're a talented team and, and one to watch for as well. And again, they're off to a really hot start. Uh, but D's looking at Highland, uh, fourteen zero and one. Yeah, <clears throat> Highland Bulldogs, um, perennially always super competitive. They are, if you ever watch them play, they are the epitome of a small ball team. They'll bunt, they'll run, they'll delay steal, they'll do all of the little things right. Uh, they're very well coached. They've won a couple state titles here. Uh, in the last decade or so, they're off to a 14-0-1 start. A um, couple guys leading the way. Jake Ottensmeyer, he's a senior, signed with Eastern Illinois. Hitting over 400, OPS over 1,000. He's been one of the best players at Highland there for the past few years. Also a standout basketball player for their, their basketball program. Uh, Chase Knabel, uncommitted uh, junior, left-handed pitcher, can just flat-out pitch. We'll throw three pitches for strikes in any count. He's given up one run in 26 in the third innings this year. One walk, 33 punch-outs. He walked seven guys last year and struck out 77, I believe. Um, so in the zone often. Trent Clemens is their other kind of the, the next arm in that one-two punch, 1.29 ERA, 21 and two-thirds innings pitched. And then offensively, they won 21 games last year, and a good chunk of that group is back. Uh, Declan Riggs is a physical left-handed bat. He'll play first base for them. He's a senior. 
Trey Koisher plays shortstop, senior committed to Swick, hitting over 400 on the year. We got Garen Stone, who's a 6'5", 205-pound, uncommitted junior, sitting 367 and has some juice in the lineup. So they're a team that can beat you in a couple ways. Uh, they're slugging it more than they have in the past. Like I said, they'll bunt, they'll run, they'll steal, and they're going to really be tested this week. Uh, they play in the Mississippi Valley Conference. They'll draw Muscuda here in Monday and Wednesday to kick off their conference slate. They got Austin Musso today. Um, so that should be a great game, competitive matchup. And Highland is definitely a team to watch. Thanks, Diego. Um, and, and now looking at these teams uh, we had ranked in our preseason Power 25, uh, Drew's going to kind of take us through that. They've had you know a good week, and maybe they're kind of getting back on track. Yeah, naturally, Gavin, um, we roll out the preseason Power 25. We do the best we can. We look over all the information, the rosters, all the information the coach gives us, and, and we do the best we can with slotting these teams. And some of the teams fell out of uh, the Power 25 early on, just with rough starts to the year, for whatever reason that may be. Um, but there's four of them we've got here kind of in our sheet that are trending in the right direction again, and we're not going to forget about them. We like them in the preseason for a reason. We still like them. Um, one of those is Brother Rice. They had a four and one week. They're now seven and eight. Not the record you would expect, um, but I do think that that should continue to get better. Uh, they had two Power 25 wins on the week, so they are certainly – not going anywhere as far as uh, us paying attention to them. Stevenson is another team, ten and six overall now, four and zero oh week. Um, really like them preseason. Still like them. Hersey, I mean Hersey's got a ton of arms. We we ranked them pretty high preseason. They are now seven and six, coming off a three and one week. And then you've got a uh, like Brother Rice. You got a fellow uh, CCL blue team in here in Saint Rita. Uh, who are now 10 and six after a three and one week and certainly on our radar have some quality wins. And um, like a lot of the schools, you know, that are not in the power 25 here, uh, we are still paying attention to them. Uh, just if they're not in the power 25, it doesn't mean that they're just off our radar. We're paying attention to all these teams. And uh, those are just four teams that have plenty of talent on their roster that are trending in the right direction. Yeah, and then kind of looking at some of these game recaps, uh, our staff heads out to a bunch of games throughout the spring, and, and last week we saw quite a few games. Uh, the first one that we'll kind of talk about is this U High St. Joe Ogden game that I went to. Uh, St. Joe Ogden won thirteen to nine, but really impressive game for me from from Max Heineman, uh, catcher at U High. He's an uncommitted twenty twenty six. He's a really good hitter, um, and that's what we've kind of seen from him in the past, but. I was really impressed defensively by him. He was blocking a ton of balls. Nothing was getting by him. Um, and then, obviously, at the plate, he had a good game, too. He had a stand-up triple. Um, really good swing and, and just a good player, and he's a competitor. Uh, he's one to uh, to really keep an eye on, and he's, an, again, an uncommitted 2026. Um, and then Charlie Veracruz, he's going to Notre Dame. He's a U-high shortstop. Uh, really impressive defensively for me. In and out, he was making the right play, you know, moving left and right, soft hands. Really good transfer, good arm across the diamond. It's accurate. Um, he's just exactly what you kind of look for in that guy that's up the middle. Um, so just a really good uh, defensive shortstop for them. And then at the plate, too, he had a home run. It was a no-doubt home run over the left field wall. Um, and then for St. Joe Ogden, Luke Landris, he's an Illinois commit. Uh, he started at second base, and, again, he showed really well defensively during in and out. Uh, just same thing as, as Veracruz, kind of. They're very similar in stature and, and the way they move and athleticism. Um, just moving well both sides and a good arm and, and good transfer and things like that. Uh, and, you know, at the plate, he was a good bat, too. He had a couple hits on the day. Really quick hand, stays direct to the ball. Um, and he, he's just one to watch for for that St. Joe Ogden team. But they're, St. Joe Ogden's a good team to watch. Uh, small, I think they're 2 A school, small school down here in central Illinois. Um, but they've got a really solid squad. Uh, and then another game that I was at was Normal Community in Champaign Central. Uh, I got to see Ethan Everly pitch, and he is a really, really good pitcher. Uh, one of those guys that we've seen that just continues to throw strikes every time we see him. I think last year for, for Community, he only gave up one run in, on the entire year. Um, and kind of the same thing that I saw uh, this game, just a lot of strikes, eight strikeouts, one walk. Fastball was you know 86 to 88 miles an hour, touched at 89. A lot of arm side run. He's going to get a lot of swing and miss on that. And then his curveball slider, whatever you want to call it, at 73 to 76, big sweep shape. 
and it just has that late sharp bite that just drops into the zone right at the last second. I've said it before to these guys that his breaking ball reminds me of, of Reed Detmers. It's just that big sweeping pitch that drops in late. It's going to get a lot of swing and miss. And um, then he's got a change up too. It's 78 to 81 miles an hour. He's got some fade on it. Um, he threw it predominantly to right-handed hitters, um, but still a good pitch for there for Everly. And then Kyle Beatty, uh, he's a he's a 2025. He's an uncommitted 2025. He's normal community shortstop. Uh, he was first team all-conference for the Ironmen in football last year. He's their quarterback. Uh, he's a really good athletic player, um, good defensive actions. Um, and he's a guy that can probably stick up the middle uh, moving forward. And then at the plate, too, he's got a quick bat, really direct to the ball. He's their leadoff guy and, and kind of that uh, spark plug for the for the Ironmen at the top of their lineup. Um, and then for Champaign Central, I just want to mention Charlie Hobbs. He's a uh, he's committed to Parkland. He's a senior. He's their shortstop. He's probably 6'2", 180. Uh, really wiry kid, but I, I, defensively, he's really impressive. And I think as, you know, once he gets to Parkland and as he gets some strength added on to him, he'll be a uh, really, really good bat and, and just a good player for that Parkland team. Um, and he'll be one to watch kind of throughout his collegiate career too. So I'm excited to follow Charlie and, and I've seen him twice now this year and he's impressed uh, in both of those games that I've seen. Um, but, you know, Tyler and, and Hammett, they both got out to games as well this this uh, past week. And Tyler got to see Huntley and McHenry. Yeah, I saw a Fox Valley matchup uh, this time last week on Monday. Uh, Huntley won 8-3. to three. Kind of like back and forth, McHenry ended up, uh, they were up 3-1. to one and, and Huntley scored seven unanswered runs to win 8-3. to three. Um, Six of which came at the bottom of the sixth. So... Uh, big comeback performance from the Red Raiders. Uh, just to touch on a few performances, AJ Putty had two of the game's biggest hits, uh, in, especially in the later stages of the game. He had a solo shot in the bottom of the fifth, I believe. And then in the bottom of the sixth, he had a nine pitch at bat. Um, bases loaded, one out before eventually uh, hitting a ball right past the shortstop uh, to bring in two runs to give them the lead. So, um, Really impressive stuff from A.J. Putty. He's a corner infielder, 2025, going to Illinois. Uh, and then Drew Borkowski got the start for Huntley. Highly touted 2026. I thought he battled. Um, he showed a lot of composure on the mound for such a young kid. Didn't get the best of defense behind him at times, but I thought he, he continued to pound the zone and, and compete. Uh, he was working with an 84 to 87 mile an hour fastball, touched 88 a few times in the early stages. Um, it went to a changeup as his main secondary, which I thought was a really above average offering uh, in this look. And for McHenry, Bryson Elbrecht, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, apologies if I'm not Bryson, but uh, he got the start for McHenry. He's an uncommitted 2025, another guy who just battled. Uh, he pounded the zone against a very good lineup. He was 82 to 86 with the fastball, had a ton of spin on the, on the breaker. It was 2,400. Kept a lot of those good hitters in that Huntley lineup off balance, and he punched out six over four innings um, and left the game uh, with the, you know, he was in line for the win. Uh, gave up no earned runs. He did give up one unearned run, but uh, just a really good game there. I don't think that's the last we're going to hear of McHenry. They're a really talented group. Um, and then I actually got to see our number one, Nazareth, face our then number two, uh, Julia Catholic, Saturday morning. Uh, we got to see the newly turfed R.J. Sanders Field, which is a beautiful, beautiful field over there at Nazareth. Um, really nice complex. But in that game, Landon Tomey uh, was awesome. Uh, Naz won 7-4, to four, but Landon Tomey, solid at-bats. He's a left-handed hitter facing two of the better left-handed arms um, on that JCA team. And, and Jacob Gimble and Lucas Granton, it was just kind of like a walk in the park for Landon. Uh, he had two hits in the game. David Cox got the start for Nazareth. Uh, he's a 2024 going to UIC, um, and he was strong, I thought. Uh, another guy who just pitched through trouble and showed a ton of composure. Uh, he was 85 to 88, topped 89 a couple times on the mound. Uh, Jake Troiner for JCA had two hits and two RBI in the game. Another kid going to Illinois, Chicago. Uh, he's first baseman for the Hill. And then Mac McGarry came in and closed the game for Nazareth. Um, he was he dominated. Uh, worked two perfect innings, punched out four against a really good JCA lineup. Uh, he was 86-87 with the fastball, touched 88. 
uh, spun in a, a short but sharp, uh, I think it was a slider, uh, as his main secondary. So a lot to like with Nazareth, what they've got going there, obviously. Number one for a reason, they're 17-0 now, but JCA still played a really good game, I thought. Um, and then earlier in the week, we had one of our area scouts out to see Nazareth. Uh, Kevin Cronin was out there. He saw them beat Lane Tech 10-1. to Just a few um, performances we want to touch on here. Luca Fiore threw the ball well, punched out six over five innings of work. Uh, he was 83-85, to touched 86 with the fastball. Jaden Fowski, who was a who's a high profile 2025, um, went two for four with a double and three RBI. And Landon Tomey just hadn't had a hell of a week. Um, went three for four with an RBI in that game as well. So um just some performances to touch on in that game. And as always, if you guys ever want more in-depth breakdowns on any of these players and these games, check out our scout blog. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. And and Hammett was also out to some games this past week. So, Hammett, you want to kind of take us through that Libertyville and Lake Forest game? Yeah. Um, they uh, were playing – they'd already played each other once, I believe, earlier in the week. Um, and the Lake Forest coach was telling me that it was a really good game. And it was uh, – you know, they repeated <laughs> another good game against each other when I was there. It uh, went eight innings. Um, Libertyville did win 6-2. to two. Uh, They scored four in the top of the eighth to take the – take the lead and eventually win but yeah I mean Anthony Fry he was kind of the name of the game for Libertyville that day um uncommitted junior uh cruising around 80 81 but his slider you know a lot of swing and miss uh whenever he wanted uh that was his go-to uh he went seven innings only allowed one earned run punched out eight um two walks and scattered six hits so he had a really good day um Colin Morrison uh sophomore lefty for Lake Forest. Um, yeah, he's been a guy that we've liked in the past and he showed really well this winter. So we were going out to get a look at him. Uh, he was 80 to 84. He threw it well, uh, three pitches for strikes and he's got a loose, you know, upside, uh, delivery that, you know, there's more in there. So it was a good look at him. Um, Ryan Wilberding, he was a guy that was hitting in the two hole for Libertyville. Uh, he's only a freshman. So, that says a lot in and, uh, in and of itself. Uh, he's really super hitterish look, um, not scared. He attacks early and counts. He's going to be a good bat uh, in the middle of that lineup for a long time. Um, and then, yeah, Luca Royer, he almost walked the game off in uh, the bottom of the seventh with a ball that missed a home run by, I don't know, a foot maybe. Uh, he ended up tying the game with that with that double off the wall, but – he was he was really close to walking that thing off. Um, and then Ryan Andrews, he came out to close for Libertyville. Um, you know, a guy that we really had nothing on, and that's that's what it's all about is when someone pops like that. Um, yeah, he was eighty to eighty five with a big over the top breaking ball. Uh, had a super clean inning, only needed eight pitches, and seven of them were for strikes. So, yeah, he uh, he's an arm that we'll definitely uh, need to go see again. Um, but yeah, nice little closer they got there at Libertyville. Sweet. Thanks guys. Um, so that'll wrap it up for our fourth episode of the IHSA, IHSA podcast. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and then subscribe to our YouTube. So you don't miss any of our podcasts or any other video content that we produce. Um, our goal with all of these is just to try and shine more light on these players and give them more opportunity to, uh, be seen and, and be, you know, heard about by these college coaches. So, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you guys next time.